Hi, welcome back. So in the second part of chapter eight, what we're going to do is take a look at the impact of elasticities and what does that mean to taxes and who ends up paying a higher amount of the tax. Remember that the word levy just means who the tax law intended to pay, not necessarily who does pay. That's the incident. So those two terms are really important to kind of uh, make sure you understand the difference. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay, so again, taking a look at uh, the implications of taxation on a per unit basis. And so the first thing I wanna do is to just recap very briefly some things that you should be solid on at this point and you should know. Remember that elasticity, the flatter the curve, the more elastic it is. So in this particular, uh, I just pulled out something to, to kind of highlight elasticities, but I think it might be worth uh, reviewing. If you know this, go ahead and skip forward. But remember here, the most elastic curve would be D2 because it is, actually I should say D1, it's the flattest of all of them, followed by D2, D3, D4, and then the N. So each of these are differing according to their elasticity. Remember the flatter it is, the more elastic it is. We can flip that around and say the steeper it is, the more inelastic it is. So here DN would be the most inelastic, followed by D4, D3, D2, and then D1. Okay, so just to kind of recap, uh, Remember that what determines elasticity, the avail availability of close substitutes, necessities versus luxuries, how we define the market. If it's very narrowly defined, then it's going to be more elastic because there are multiple substitutes to that particular item and the time horizon. Remember, everything is more elastic in the longer term. Okay. So when we take a look at um, dead weight loss, remember that's that portion of buyers that have left the market because of a tax or the proportion of sellers that have left the market because of tax. The greater the dead weight loss of the tax. Now in this particular um, slide, what we're discussing is the overall market. So when we put demand and supply together and we take a look at what is the dead weight loss, what we're trying to do in this particular thing is to make sure that we understand we're talking about the overall market. Okay, not which one is more inelastic or elastic. Here we're just saying, here's demand, here's supply. This is the amount of the tax. And if we have an elastic market, either on demand or supply or both, we're going to have a greater deadweight loss. So this just kind of illustrates that concept. First, in this slide, we take a look at panel A, and panel A says, okay, we've got inelastic supply. So when we shove this tax wedge in here like this, we can see that the dead weight loss isn't really all that small. And let me take a look at what I mean by not all that small. So if this is, the quantity with the tax, let me go ahead and put that in there. Okay. If the pink line is the quantity with the tax and I need a different color and this green line will be quantity equilibrium. Oh, I guess it's the second pink line. I'm still learning how to change colors, but this line here, well, let's see if I can do this. This line right here is going to be quantity equilibrium. Okay, so notice that quantity equilibrium is pretty close to the quantity with the tax. They're not very far apart. When I'm saying pretty close, I'm looking at the distance between these two things here, the quantity with the tax, and quantity equilibrium. Now, if I go over to panel B, and I'm gonna go ahead and put some lines in here so you can easily see what I'm, what I'm referring to. So here is our quantity 
with the tax with the pink line. And I think I did this right. Aha, and here's our quantity uh, equilibrium with the red line. Notice how far apart these two things are. And this is why we say when you're looking at a market, the more elastic that particular market of both demand and supply are going to create greater deadweight losses. So going back to some of the discussions we've had in class, why do we tax what we tax? We tax them because they're more inelastic. So people will continue to buy them, which we'll see later on generates greater tax revenue for the government. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase this. Come on, where are you? There we go. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Here, again, just illustrated with demand and supply. Uh, panel C, we have more inelastic. And in this case, it's demand that's more inelastic than supply. But you can see the size of the tax. And again, you can also look at this one if you wanted to and say, okay, where is price equilibrium? Right, which is right there. And then where is... Uh, price buyers pay would be the orange line. The price sellers receive would be the blue line. And notice that because demand is more inelastic than supply, that the buyers are paying a greater portion of that tax, right? So this amount right here, there we go. Okay, now again, panel B just says, hey, if demand is more elastic than it was previously in panel A, we get a much larger deadweight loss, and that's that pink triangle that you see on um, panel B. Okay, so this is kind of sums up what I just talked about, um, and he, you can all read, so I'm not going to read it to you, but uh, just a key, really key important note to remember, I think, um, is uh, this one right here that the higher to whoops that was wrong hold on I'll get this right okay key important point to remember is that the higher tax will always fall to the more inelastic side of the market so this is some good stuff to know okay cool Go oh, silly me. All right, so that concludes, let me stop the share. Okay, so that concludes the second section of chapter eight. In the next objective, we're going to take a look at, um, specifically looking at that dead weight loss a little bit more and um, trying to decide if a market is, a, why it's so inefficient. And um, so I'll see you next time. Thanks.